Hey, hello everyone, and welcome back to the walkthrough in the last part. I pretty much cleared out Grass Town 100%, now we just gotta work our way back. So, let's do that, and drop down here, avoid those guys, because I don't need to do anything with them now. Those blue guys with red eyes, ugh, shudder. <laughs> and go over to, I'll just take the hit, I don't care. I'll just save over here and recover my health anyway. So, there we go. No problem rushing back through here. And what you want to do over here is go over and make an explosive at this place. And we also rescued this guy in the last part. Well, you know, from getting stuck in the ground thanks to Balrog. So I guess that's another highlight of the last part. But uh, that was also a part of getting through that and in general. So I thought, hey, let's not need to mention it. Because, you know, it happened in the mid parts. And yeah, anyway. He makes those things into an explosive, and we're gonna use that explosive to bomb the door down. So, wait, I'm going to go up and over. Oh, I said up and over. Thank you! <laughs> so I can ambush the frog like that, and. Whoa, bats! Bats! Ah, oh, frog! No! I was ambushed from below! Okay, now what you wanna do is talk to the guy. Yeah, I got the bomb right. I thought he was gonna mention something about the bomb. Well, whatever, let's just blow up the door. That was quite the explosion. Well, it blew up the door anyway. Well, it blew open the door, I should say. Woohoo, indeed! So, yeah, that guy that we were rescuing is indeed uh, Sue's brother. It's Kazuma Sakamoto. You can call me Kazuma, that's fine. I was lucky enough to escape from the doctor, but unfortunately my teleporter sent me here. I thought I was going to starve. I owe my very life to you. Oh, by the way, you wouldn't happen to know the vil Mimigma village, would you? Sue? You've met Sue? Ah, I see. You came in Sue's place to find me. All right, then. Lead the way to the village, and... This new guy appears, Kazuma. Professor Booster! Yeah, this guy is Booster. It's kind of a silly name for a man, but anyway, I'm not gonna judge. <laughs> Don't wanna say anything? Okay. <laughs> and how is Sue? Is she alright? She's at the Mamiga village. This young fellow was just about to guide me there. Huh? Oh, do you two know each other? No. No, we've never met. I, th I think we have met before. He certainly seems to know me. He came up to examine me and stuff like that with my gun pointed towards him and seemingly trusts that I won't shoot him for no reason whatsoever since we just met, but I don't know. And, uh, yeah. Basically, the, well, I'll just wait for, I mean, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later. So I'll, I'll just go along with them. So yeah, if you go over to, oh, well, I guess I can save and recover my health here, that's pretty nice. Uh, if you go over to the computer here, whoop, the teleporter is currently unavailable, and it doesn't look like it's working at the moment. So I guess it's a one-way teleporter for whatever reason, and he got teleported into this shack of sorts, and the door was rusted shut, he couldn't get out. Uh, you'd think that a place that has technology like teleporters wouldn't have, you know, a door that would rush shot, but whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'll, let's see if we can lead him back. And what is this scooter? Hmm. Interesting. Oh boy. Oh boy. What won't stop? Run! We must save them. We must go after them and avoid the frogs. Oh, poopers! I <laughs> should stop, uh, just like generally avoiding enemies and just move on forward by shooting them like before. I'm taking more damage by doing doing it like that than otherwise. So that's not exactly the best choice of action, though it does save a bit of time, I would say. Anyway, we want to go all the way back to the beginning near Santa's house. You won't find them there, but they've gone back through the teleporter to uh, Mabigma Village. So, you shouldn't have any trouble finding them when you get back, and you shouldn't have trouble getting back because you had to go back a few times to get the uh, jellyfish juice, gum base, charcoal, whatever. Uh, actually, the gum base was in the building at the far right. So what am I talking about? I don't know. I'm speaking in gibberish. Well, okay, it's it's not gibberish. It's more like non sequitur or something like that. But uh, let's just keep going on and blast our way forward as quickly as we can. Because, you know, only so much time I would like to put into a part uh, before turning it off. 
as I said before, time is kind of important to keep people interested in, rather than turn people away. You know, it's kind of counterproductive. And whoa, whoa, I'm getting blocked in. I'm getting blocked in. <laughs> uh, maybe I should be using the fireball here. Fireball, fireball, yeah! <laughs> fireball is much more useful. And would you look at this? That scooter that they were on, the flying scooter, now appears to be broken up quite a bit. Um, no, I don't need to save my game. It's just gonna be a little cutscene coming up here. Yeah, I like to go back to Arthur's house. Thank you very much, teleporter. I don't know how I operated that without a computer, but whatever. So, we're weapons. That's right. The doctor wants to use the red flowers to make you attack the humans. Why does he want to do that? That man is... is like a demon. He's going to use the flowers on Taraco. As far as I can tell, he's still looking for them. You can only hope he doesn't find them. If if he finds those flowers, Taraco, she would go wild. A weapon of death. I'll never allow that to happen. Uh, basically, the doctor wants the red flowers to start a war against the humans with the Mamigmas. Yeah. We'll see more about that later. And uh, so, yeah, we're okay, but my life, life flashed before my eyes. <laughs> so, and it looks like that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Sue is now freed, and that's pretty nice. So I guess after that confession and just a slight chat, she's worthy of being freed or something like that. And she's being escorted by King as well. And, uh, yep, she's going to do a little introduction. The king, the, probably the weakest person in the village, couldn't stop a tiny little girl known as Taraco. And uh, yeah, there was, used to be tons of them, but they've been kidnapped by the doctor's goons, unfortunately. So yeah, it's a pretty depressing situation because of this doctor guy. Anyway, you want to talk to these guys? You're welcome. So oh yeah, as long as you guys are okay. Those crashes and cars and sewers and more cycles not all that good anyway I should probably save my game before I move on to the next area and yeah I believe you have to talk to Taraco to make the cutscene occur uh, oh excuse me I mean sue pardon me so yeah here we go welcome back yeah you do owe me another one I saved you twice now well kind of <laughs> actually you saved yourself the second time um what, what oh I clicked through that too fast but that's okay and what is going on? Sue, my dear, we have to suspend our escape. The doctor has located the red flowers. What? How do you know this? Oh boy. So we gotta go to the sand zone and prevent him from getting to the red flowers, I guess. Okay, so hopefully we'll take down his servant or him at the sand zone. Otherwise, it could be the end of the Mamigmas and a war against us humans. And that is something that I cannot let happen. Wait, wait. You do knew- <clears throat> You do knew me. You do know me. I'm an armed scout robot that was dispatched to the island ten years ago. What? I'm a robot? I thought I was a person. People kept calling me a person. Well, well whatever. So I'm a robot and I'm a scout robot soldier guy. Huh. Interesting, isn't it? I don't even know my name yet, though. <laughs> so, I am the most suited? I hope so. Anyway, let's... Wait, what am I saving my game for? I'm just going to the next area. So I want to enable... Oh, he already connected me to the sand zone. Thank you very much. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess I look like a hum human or something like that. Anyway, sand zone, next area. Yes, I would love to go there. This is the third main area of the game, and here we go! By the way, the music in this game, I mean, music in this area, well, and the game too, is awesome. Hey, who's this hot chick? Well, she's seen me, why did she run? Anyway, we got a different version of Beetle here, they're just a little bit different, not much though. Um, they're, they're those sideways moving ones. Uh, the ones that you, when you get in their range, they fly towards you. There's nothing really all that much different from, from them, from the green variety. So you shouldn't have much to worry about with them. And just work your way up to here, and shoot your way, and go to your left. And this appears to be some sort of bar. There's a little martini glass there. Let's go inside, I want a drink. Especially after that night with, uh, Chaco. <clears throat> Chaco. Ah! 
Ooh. We have a visitor. Maybe that ah was from one of those tiny mamigmas. I know what it is you're looking for. But wake up! Mamigmas aren't your enemies. Mamigmas are harmless. Too bad for you. But. Oh boy, she whipped out a weapon. I'm on their side. This is. You're going down. <laughs> this is Curly. Curly Brace, actually. A fun fact about Curly here is that your name was actually supposed to be Curly. Your Curly Brace, actually. It said it on your hat in uh, beta pictures. Anyway, these uh, Mi'kmaqs, evidently when you shoot them, they just stun for a second. You don't kill them off for some random reason. And obviously the objective is to shoot Curly until she goes down. Don't worry, we won't kill her. We'll, we need her alive. And whenever she flashes like that, you'll notice that she shoots her machine gun like that. And whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and now uh, it only takes one shot to stun one of those little kid mamigmas. It's kind of violent actually that you're shooting some kids, but what can you do? You're just defending yourself right now, I guess. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to this boss here. And there we go. I'm so sorry, but I had to do it. We must talk like civilized um, robots. <laughs> Victory! Yes, I did. I'm sorry, though. Uh, yes. I mean, no. Oh! Yes, I am with the Mimigmas, too, and I hope to save this place. Whatever I need to do to save it. Probably defeat the doctor or something. So you see, she's Curly Brace, and she's with these kids. She doesn't have any memories, just like me. And she thinks she's a Mimikma Butcher just like the others. What others is she referring to? Well, we'll see. Um, the Polar Star. She wants to trade it for her machine gun. Now, this right here is one of the things that you have a choice for in this game. If you say yes, you'll get her machine gun. But, while it is a great item, I'm going to say no. Because I think I'll be able to get a better item later. Or at least I think it's a better item than the machine gun, in my opinion. So for me, I'm going to be saying no, but if you want a rapid fire, powerful gun that shoots... I don't know how many bullets per second, but if you want the machine gun and you're not a good fast button pressure... Pressure. In general, it's presser in general, then you'll want the machine gun, but otherwise... I recommend holding off to get a better weapon. It's an upgrade to your Polar Star. Anyway, I rambled on enough, and yeah, she, if I change my mind, she'll give me the uh, um, <clears throat> machine gun, but I don't want that at all, and that poor kid is hungry for fish, and with the sunstone, you need to lift the spell. What spell are you talking about? And no, 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 okay. <laughs> I just want to talk to everyone here just to make sure. Um, the sand crocs will be introduced to later, and I'll show you them later as well. Um, what am I talking about here? I'm just like talking in circles, and yeah, you've got to talk to all these um, enigmas until you talk to this one here at the side here. He wants me, or she wants me to bring this little puppy back over to Jenka. So let's pick up the puppy, and yes, I will. Yay, I got a puppy, and it's on my head. It looks like it's humping the back of my head or something. Anyway, let's... Uh, refill our health and missiles and save our game but there's a there's a little something in this room that not a lot not a lot of people know about pause your not pause excuse me uh, check your map and look at this see your map it looks like that there's a little extra area over to the right compared to the shape of this room well e secrets and if you jump around up here you're gonna find the way up like this walk over to the right over the top Search around, search around, come on, it's around here somewhere, I'm looking for something, excuse me, there we go, you find Curly's underwear, yeah, she hid them over at this secret area here, and this game is becoming more and more kid friendly by the minutes, anyway, work your way back over here, Save your game with the underwear in your inventory. It's right here. It's another optional item. It has absolutely no use. And may I add, she doesn't say anything different when you talk to her with your with her uh, underwear there. So does that mean that she's going freestyle or something like that? I don't know, but she doesn't seem to notice that I have them. So I guess I'll just keep them for safekeeping for whatever reason. Anyway, I'm going to end off this part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part.